Hey, Martin. Hello. So we are here on Map Time, our weekly uh, Map Chat series. And joining us today is uh, Martin Storms, who's the curator of Maps and Atlases at the Leiden University Library. And at Light, an important part of this is the enormous collection of Johannes Tabir's Boden uh, Neenhaus. How did I do on the pronunciation? Okay. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> it's Johannes Tiberius Bodel Neenhaus, but uh, I don't expect of you to pronounce it correctly. <laughs> um, and so he bequeathed his library in 1872. Uh, and uh, was a pioneer in cartographic research in the Netherlands. And so we have a few maps that you sent um, that you you can talk about the, for those of you um, listening, I, I'll bring up some of them, but you can also go to tinyurl.com uh, slash uh, me and host. Uh, so that's N-I-J-E-N-H-U-I-S. And there's three, the three maps that, that we might talk about today in there that you can play around with. Um, so, yeah, what can you tell us about uh, Nanhos and uh, how he collected his maps and just a little bit about who he was? Yes, uh, it's a good uh, thing to start with, I think. Um, well, as you said, he was um, a major map collector in the Netherlands. Um, he collected himself about 50,000 uh, loose maps and another 300 atlases. Um, so as far as I could trace, he's one of the uh, greatest private map collectors uh, worldwide I, I have found. Uh, maybe David Rumsey's collection is slightly bigger, but uh, <laughs> at least for the 19th century, he was one of the greatest private map collectors. So not as an... Uh, uh, official, but only uh, as a, just a private uh, person. Um, he studied at Leiden University, he studied law, um, and he was actually the last generation of an um, important publishing uh, house in Leiden, Luchtmans Publishing House. Um, his mother was a Luchtmans, but she died uh, soon after Bodel Nijnhuis was born. So then he were moved from Amsterdam uh, to Leiden and was raised by his aunt and uh, grandfather, the publisher Johannes Luchtmans. Mm -hmm. And he was destined to take over this uh, publishing house. So after he studied, he uh, took over that. Um, but at the same time, he already uh, started his uh, private uh, map collection for his 10th or 12th birthday. He got a small cabinet with maps from his father, okay. who still lived in Amsterdam. Um, and that was where his uh, interest in maps uh, grew. So um, from a very young age. So for this talk, I uh, choose, uh, have chosen uh, three maps um, that he purchased at an auction in 1824. And that turned out that that was one of the first, or maybe the first auction where Bodo Nijenhuis, uh, well, stepped forward as a um, major map collector. He was only 26 years of age uh, at that time. Um, yeah, um, so do you want to start with, with one of those and we can come back a little to, I have lots of questions about how he collected yeah. them. And all that. Let's um, see yeah, how it goes. <laughs> um, so why don't we? I'll bring up one here, but I can also bring it up in front. Is there one you want to start with? Um, maybe the. Um, oh, I haven't uh, thought about it. Just uh, pick one which right. you like. <laughs> yeah. So this one. Um, oh yeah, one? that's a good one. Um, so this one I thought was was very interesting because. Um, my face is kind of obscuring it, so I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it up over here. Um, let's see if I can. I think it's yeah. um, it's okay the way you had it uh, yeah. before, but okay, no problem. Uh, can you can you see the map there? Yeah. All right. Um, too fuzzy. No so, problem. You know, one of the things uh, I thought was interesting about it was um, that it it really shows how someone might make a manuscript map. Um, 
And so you kind of have three versions of Kuhlenberg uh, at different scales, and you can see the, uh, you know, the grids that they would use to to map it out. Uh, you know, it's, yeah. it's it's deeply gridded here, but even uh, on the bigger one, you can see the faint grids there. Um, but yeah, what why did you pick this one? What what do you find interesting about it? Yeah, well, it, it, this uh, map is actually part of a kind of small surveyor archive that was part of the 8024 auction. So before uh, going into more detail about this map, maybe um, say something first about the context of that auction. Mm -hmm. um, um, that was the auction of the library of Johan Meerman, who was an uh, bibliophile in the Netherlands and inherited an uh, enormous library of his uh, father, Gerard Meerman. Um, and was one of the biggest auction in that uh, in that time. And a part of that auction was a map auction. Um, and a part of the maps was this set of maps um, by uh, a surveyor named Jacob Perreno. And there is a family link between Jacob Perreno and Johan Meerman because uh, Meerman survived. Anna Cornelia Moleris was previously married with another Perreno, um, Abraham Perreno, who was the uh, only uh, um, heir of uh, the surveyor Jacob Perreno. So that's mm -hmm. uh, why uh, the map came in that uh, possession. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and it's interesting, there's a set of about 40 manuscript maps and sketches. Um, there's only one uh, printed map known, uh, which was made by Jacob Perreno, uh, which is of the region of uh, Culemborg and its surroundings. And actually this sketch and some other sketches in our collection um, are related to that printed map. So you really see the surveyor at work, um, you know, in this example, working with different scales. Uh, to reduce the size of uh, the, the town of Culemborg, uh, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, well, survey parts of, of that region uh, and um, combine that to, to, to one map uh, in the end. Yeah. Um, and so how, how uh, um, common was it for Nyan House to get maps at auction versus trading or, you know, was he making maps himself? Kind of how, how does this auction fit into his broader collecting patterns? Yeah, he didn't uh, really make maps himself, but um, of course he was a well-known figure in the publishing world as, as since he was a publisher himself. So, uh, and other publishers knew that he was interested in maps and in collecting maps. So um, we have evidence that uh, other publishers gave him maps that they published or sometimes proof prints of maps, something uh, in which he was interested too. And uh, well, from 1824 onwards, he was uh, very uh, active uh, at buying maps at auctions. Um, so maybe the, those who were at the Amsterdam ICHC conference last year remember my talk about the uh, Cornelis Krajenhof auction, mm -hmm. uh, which was a later auction, but, um, well, this is another one. And um, so that's um, what I'm trying to do in the latest years more and more is to investigate uh, what did Bodo Nijenhuis bought at these auctions mm -hmm. and... Um, and it's possible to, to trace that because sometimes uh, annotated, an, annotated uh, auction catalogs are kept. Mm -hmm. And in this case, the Meerman auction, we have the private copy of Bodo Nijenhuis uh, or the Luchtmans Publishing House copy mm -hmm. uh, on which uh, Bodo Nijenhuis make annotations uh, himself. So not only for each lot uh, who bought this map and um, for what price uh, the map was sold, 
but also uh, sometimes like uh, I already have this map or uh, someone else could uh, um, pay much more uh, for this map. So that's interesting uh, to see. And another way he collected maps was uh, just to buy them in uh, bookshops or uh, print shops. And uh, he also, when he was not able to buy a map himself, like for instance, manuscript maps in archives, he hired uh, a copyist, a, a draughtsman, uh, and he sent him to uh, an archive to make copies of maps. So it's um, a mixture of all different kinds of uh, ways to add maps to his collection. Mm -hmm. That's great. You know, we, yeah, we, uh, um, the, uh, we had, that's a nice note for you uh, in the comments there. Um, the, uh, yeah, my children are watching. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we traced similar things with, um, when we were trying to reconstruct the beginnings of the Harvard map collection with Christoph Abeling, trying to piece together, you know, where did he get his maps? And for him, it was a lot of bartering. Um, so he had all these people he was writing to in the, in the Americas, and uh, particularly the new United States saying, oh, I, you know, I really need to know this about Pennsylvania. Do you have a map of this region of Massachusetts? And so he would get all these things in the mail from, from the U.S. and he never actually went to the U.S. Um, but it sounds like uh, Nine House is more interested in, in the Netherlands. Is that right? Um, what's the, well, not, did, where's, what's not... the focus of his collection? <laughs> Well, I think uh, one third of his collection is uh, our maps of the Netherlands, um, but uh, the collection covers more or less the whole world. I, I checked uh, how many maps of uh, the Americas there are in the Bodo Nijenhuis collection. It's about 1,500 to 1,600. Um, so quite an, a number of maps, but uh, only 3% of his uh, complete collection. <laughs> to play, place it in perspective. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think, uh, but that's the uh, whole of the Americas. So uh, for the territories where this new the United States, I think it's about 500 maps. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, no, that's, that's and interesting. And, <laughs> uh, especially the, you know, one of the things we were also trying to piece together was, you know, this circulation of manuscript maps. And so I'm interested to hear if you know anything more about the copyists he sent out or if there are any records about, you know, how he's, um, yeah, how that works, just what the mechanics are of hiring a copyist and like sending them out and, or, you know, is he trading copies of uh, his maps for copies of other people's maps? Like what's the, what the process of that is? Yeah. Um, well, the, the most information on that is to be found on the maps itself, um, because Bodo Nijenhuis, in the margins, he wrote um, small notes that the map was uh, copied by uh, Vendel, that's the name of the draughtsman. Uh, we have hundreds of Vendel copies in the collection, uh, with the date when that, when, uh, that was uh, done. Um, a nice example, um, is a map of the siege of Breda, which is very, a very rare map. And there's a small um, uh, loose uh, sheet of, of paper with a note um, where um, Bodo Nijenhuis wrote uh, on which date uh, Bendel um, handed one of the sheets of that, uh, that big map of, of Breda. Mm -hmm. So, um, and in total for these six sheets, it took uh, Bendel over, uh, two years to, to complete that. Yeah, um, yeah the, so it's, it's uh, searching for these, these uh, small annotations everywhere uh, hidden in the collection, actually. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's both daunting and fun project, uh, and sadly one that it's much more difficult to do in our current situation. Uh, I don't know, do you have access to the library at all right now? Well, actually, I work uh, from home for about two and a half months now. I only been to the library uh, last Friday for the first time. Mm -hmm. So that was a relief uh, to uh, see and smell the original maps, I must say. <laughs> yeah, um, we, haven't, we haven't been back yet. So the, the library is, uh, uh, is more or less uh, open so people can um, hire books. 
mm-hmm. or uh, lean books. How do you say that? And uh, uh, the special, yeah, borrow. Sorry, <laughs> the special collection uh, reading room is now open for a limited number of uh, of uh, researchers. Uh, mm-hmm. That's great. So hopefully that will develop a bit yeah. uh, uh, um, in the near and, future. Yeah, uh, you know, it's interesting also to think about where where copies of Nyan House's maps might be. You know, that's a uh, almost impossible thing to look for programmatically. But you know, if he has copies of other people's maps, um, presumably there are uh, collections that have uh, you know the um, you know, sets of maps that were other collectors made or in, put together that include copies of nine houses maps. And so, uh, you know, there's no way to really uh, look for those, but uh, it'd be a happy accident to figure out where the, some of those might be. Yeah, I haven't fi- found uh, any map um, uh, that was copied after a map from both the nine house collection, but he must have um, um, changed map or sold maps or yeah, exactly. exchanged them or something because uh, for that 1824 auction, uh, well, because uh, we have the annotated uh, um, catalog, we know exactly what maps Bodonai and I bought, but we didn't found them, um, all of them back in the collection. So maybe he got a better copy um, and... Uh, that uh, the other map uh, away or so. Yeah, um, and so let's look at another one of these. The uh, I'll bring yeah. up um, this one was was nice. So and again, you can anyone can look at these in more detail at at tinyurl.com slash nianhouse, which is n i j e n h u i s. Um, so what are we looking at here? Yeah, actually, this is not really a map, but more a drawing or a cross-section of a mine, a gold mine in Sweden, in Edelfors. Um, also from the auction of uh, your Miermann. Um, Miermann uh, uh, wasn't only a book um, collector, a bibliophile, but also a traveler. He made uh, several great journeys, travels through Europe, and his last uh, and longest uh, travel was to Northern Europe. Um, initially, he was only planned to visit Denmark and Sweden, but then he got to Norway and Finland and ended up in Russia. And he was away for three years. And in March 1798, he visited a gold mine in uh, Edelfors in Sweden, which is the oldest uh, gold mine uh, if I'm right. And uh, this uh, sketch he drew himself. And uh, later on, um, Bodomain House found it in the, in the, um, in the collection of Miermann when it was auctioned. So um, uh, the annotation is not quite sure. Uh, so maybe he kept it for himself and kept it out of auction. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure about that, but uh, uh, at least via uh, Miermann, it. Um, became part of the Bodonai Nice collection. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's an interesting, you know, these these diag- these mind diagrams, you you encounter them. Uh, you know, we have some, and I know other collections have them. It's an interesting point where in these visualizations of, um, you know, you have some of the early thematic mapping has to do with geology. And so kind of trying to define the distribution of rocks in different regions. Um, but it goes hand in hand with these um, cross sections, uh, you might say, of mines. And even, you know, there's, I'm thinking of some of those, do we have some, I don't know if it's a Suter map or a, um, a French map, I'm forgetting now, but there, I know there's some maps that are showing a region uh, rich in mines in Germany, I think. And then the cartouche is this big, something very similar to this, but more pictorial. That's a kind of this cross section of the mine and how how the mine works and all of that. So uh, yeah. it's it's an interesting mix of of, uh, of styles there. Um, I think this this one is a very early one uh, when he, if it's right that uh, I think he drew it when he visited the mine. So we copied the map that was 
there. Mm -hmm. So then it must be drawn in 1798, which I think is quite uh, early for this kind of uh, drawings. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, and, um, well, a geological mapping is not a really uh, uh, important focus for the Bodle Nijenhuis collection, but mm -hmm. this is more kind of coincidence that it was among the maps uh, of the Mierman uh, auction. Yeah. yeah. And I noticed um, that I chose uh, three um, hand-drawn maps for this talk, but actually the most maps that Bodo Nijenhuis bought at this auction were printed maps. So it's a bit... Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, unrepresentative, but, yes. but beautiful nonetheless. And this, so this is the, the third map there that another hand drawn, but this one almost certainly a copy of a, of a printed map. Um, I, I assume that's right. Yes. Well, actually I didn't find a, a printed map that um, uh, is related to this one. Uh, the map was drawn by a surveyor butcher, butcher mm -hmm. in 1798. So soon after uh, Miaman uh, was visiting Riga, the capital of uh, Latvia. Um, it's a beautiful land draw map, I think. Um, so another uh, example that uh, this uh, traveler Miaman bought maps during his uh, travels. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, um, what's interesting is um, in his travel accounts, Miemann writes about, um, sometimes about uh, maps that he saw or he visited uh, a surveying institute in Sweden, for instance. And uh, sometimes he also uh, writes that he bought uh, a map or try to buy a map and it was not that easy especially in the Russian Empire um, so he writes about an, other maps of uh, Livonia that was then the region which is now Estonia and uh, Latvia uh, about uh, Count uh, Melin uh, um, who um, produced in the 1790s uh, an atlas of eight maps of uh, Livonia and um, Initially, the, the Russian uh, emperor was very enthusiastic about it, but at a certain point he thought, well, this is uh, uh, so a detailed and accurate map, uh, so maybe uh, it could be of benefit for our uh, enemies. And uh, at that time, he, um, he prohibited uh, the distribution of the map, and uh, the map maker was also banned and, uh, and uh, put in, in, in jail uh, afterwards so that's not a nice story but it's nice to read that um, um, Miemann um, writes about this and then he ends with uh, uh, saying and that he finally um, managed to uh, um, got, get uh, a copy of this uh, this set of eight maps of uh, Livonia. Yeah uh, and again the, I, someone was just asking for the the URL again it's tinyurl.com slash uh, Nyan House uh, so N I J E N H U I S, um, and one of the details I love on this map because, um, as you know, I'm obsessed with these tactile features on maps. There's not only the the scroll work on the legend there on the side, but also if um, I won't do it here, but if you zoom in on the image uh, in the cartouche there on the stone, um, uh, I don't know what to call it, but on the stone slab there you see all the map making tools. Uh, so you see a, uh, you know, a right angle, uh, a, rule, a straight edge, uh, a pair of calipers, a, um, and a uh, what's, uh, protractor that allows you, would allow you to draw specific angles and measure the angles. Um, and so I love seeing maps that are kind of cataloging their own uh, making uh, in them like that. Um, the, but that's super interesting how, how this came to be and the kind of politics of and dangers of map making in, yeah. uh, in different empires. Um, I guess I wonder um, what, you know, stepping back a little bit, they, you know, the Nyan House set is such an important part of um, 
Leiden's uh, collection. Um, and so I guess I wonder what, how do you think about building around it, right? So like what kind of gaps exist in it that you're trying to um, fill in? Like what strengths does it have that you try to build on? Like how does it, how do you think of its kind of gravitational uh, pull and how you work with that? Yeah. Um, uh, let me think about that. Um, I think um, it's good to um, to focus on the strengths of uh, that collection and not to um, try to collect uh, all other things uh, in which the collection isn't strong. So it's basically an historical collection. Bodonaina has died in 1872. So the maps in this collection are 19th century and older. Um, so uh, modern maps is not really a strength of the map collection uh, in Leiden, so to say. Um, but on the other hand, um, it's now about half of the total map collection is the Bodonainaus collection because in later uh, recent years, we inherited two major uh, colonial map collections of the Royal Tropical Institute in Amsterdam and the uh, Royal Netherlands Institute for Southeast Asian and Caribbean Studies in uh, Leiden, two institutes that had to close down their libraries and we took over their maps or take care of them. Um, so now more and more the Leiden map collection is focused on the Dutch uh, former colonies, so the Netherlands East Indies, now uh, Indonesia, Suriname, and the Netherlands Antilles. Mm -hmm. So that's another major focus um, uh, which we try to uh, strengthen even more. Um, and for the Bodonein House collection, uh, strengths are, well, the Netherlands and especially manuscript maps. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not only the let's say, the commercial, um, well-known Amsterdam uh, Dutch maps of Blau and uh, publishers like those. Well, we have them as well, of course, but uh, um, try to focus on, on those, um, well, more rare maps, uh, so manuscript maps and um, uh, the um, uh, proof prints of maps and used maps, uh, things like that. Yeah, that sounds great. And... Uh... I, I should note that uh, I noticed your T-shirt is the uh, the ICHT T-shirt, uh, yeah. <laughs> which uh, uh, took place often at the Tropical Institute, uh, and so um, just wanted to plug. But such a, it was such a great conference and uh, uh, great collegial uh, atmosphere. Um, do any of the the audience have questions? If you do. Uh, you can plug them in. There's a little uh, rectangle there with a question mark. Throw the question in there, and then everyone will be able to see it. And we can try our best to uh, satisfy you with an answer. Um, but we're coming up on, on the half hour, so um, I know you probably uh, have to have dinner. Uh, if you yes, already. I have. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I have to wait for dinner after the, the map time, but that's uh, exactly. no problem. <laughs> uh, well, I'm not seeing any questions, so um, let's let's just call it there. But thank you so much for for coming. Uh, it's been a real You're pleasure. Welcome. And next week we'll be talking with Stace Maples, who's the geospatial manager and self-described geospatial Swiss Army knife uh, at the Stanford Geospatial Center. Uh, he'll be talking about a 20th century map uh, by none other than uh, Dr. Seuss. So uh, this should be a fun, a fun time. Um, so thank you again for coming and uh, I hope to see you soon. Okay, see you soon. Goodbye. <laughs>